Hi, welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. We're back on the 1950 Chevy truck cab. Uh, we've got another hole to fill. Uh, this yeah, it's got more holes in it, I swear. Uh, but uh, we've got an antenna hole, kind of an ill-advised location for antenna hole. As uh, I recall, the hood's got a little dent in it from coming when it's open. It comes back and it hits the antenna. So we're going to fill that in, just delete it, um, and then they'll do something else for an antenna. And then we also have the mirror mount uh, has been damaged as well. This mirror bolts on right here, as you know, and it sticks out with a steel rod and it's been tweaked over and it uh, bent the, be the body right here. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get that pulled back out and then we're gonna have to straighten out this hole and then get that welded in as well. So let's jump in here and see what we can do. Okay, just to show you real quick what we got going on. This is where the antenna was. Uh, as you can see, uh, it, the hole right here has dipped down right on this side. It's pulled up on this side when the antenna was bent over. So we need to get that flattened out uh, to the right shape. It looks like the body line is not too bad right here. So we're gonna have to bring that up a little bit and uh, you know tap it down where we need to. That should be pretty easy. Then we'll cut a piece to fit, get that welded in and fixed. Now the uh, mirror mount right here, the mirror mounts right here like this and uh, somebody's pushed up on it and pushed the sheet metal down here. Uh, not really pulled up here much. It feels like there's a little, little bit right there, but it's just been pulled down uh, right there when they wrenched up on it. Not sure how that happened. Uh, doesn't really matter. We're going to fix it. So ideally, I'd like to push from the backside with the port of power while I tap around here but um, I really can't get an angle on it uh, to push. I don't think I'm gonna try. And if that doesn't work out, what we'll do end up doing is uh, take a quarter 20 bolt with the washer on it, push it up from the bottom, put a washer on this side and tighten a nut on there and, and uh, clamp on both of these holes. We'll clamp that inner brace. There's an inner brace in there. We'll clamp that all together tight, then put the uh, slide hammer on there and just pull out at the same time. And we'll just pull this try to pull this back out where it belongs and hopefully pull that inner brace out with it. That way when this bolt, this mirror bolts back up, um, it's not, you know, trying to pull it together. It, it's all one piece and then it's nice and secure and it doesn't bend it again. So let's, uh, let's, let's get to work on this mirror mount first and then we'll move over to the antenna hole. Okay, let's give this a try. I'm gonna um, pull on the top one first. It's the worst. I pulled uh, these pretty tight now. They're on there really tight holding that brace up because I really want that, that inner brace to come up with it so it does its job and um, doesn't actually try to pull the sheet metal back down once the mirror is installed. We want them to be close together. In fact, I may uh, drill a hole um, either on this side or the other side if I can get in there and weld it and try to tack that uh, brace up against the sheet metal with the bolts on tight. So. Let's hook the slide hammer on here. We'll give it a couple of smacks and see what happens here. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to, uh, so the mirror pushed it down like at this angle. It's deeper on this side than this side. It's a little stronger over here. So I'm going to kind of pull on the slide hammer a little bit. I don't want to break that bolt off, but I'm going to give a little bit of pressure while I'm slamming it up on this direction. Man, that's tough. It's moving. Everything falling off the truck here. It's moving. Boy, that's tough. Got a little bit farther to go. It's hard to tell. There's so many paint jobs on this uh, vehicle, on this cab, on this truck, that it feels low, but it's actually just uh, piles of paint 
down this is the original red here we can see some green in there and of course blue so you know I keep feeling it uh, when I'm working on this truck thinking oh I got a little bit farther to go but I actually don't I'm pretty much flush so that's something to keep in mind it's actually feeling really good up here not bad I think I'm gonna switch over to this one and pull up on this one a little bit and see what happens that was pretty tough but uh, did not want to move really had to pull hard and slam that thing hard This isn't the biggest slide hammer in the world. Okay, so kind of the same thing. It's lower on this side than this side. So I'm gonna lean the, uh, I'm gonna pull on this slide hammer a little bit and then slam up on it. Get this off and see how it looks. Okay, that doesn't feel too bad right there, but like I said, I'm not sure because there's so much paint on here. I'm going to have to probably grind this away. Let's pull these off, hold the mirror up there, and see how it looks. Okay, let's hold the mirror up here and see how we look. Now, if I hold the mirror over here next to it, um, it's, it's got a nice shape. This shape right here matches pretty well right here. Um, so when we hold it on there, it's gonna be a good indication if we've got this straightened out enough. Get that right over the holes. And then if I look down through here to see if I can see any light shining through, it's just, just hitting on the top on both ends and the middle still just a little low. I don't even think I can get a piece of paper in there. So we're looking pretty good. And a gasket does go on here uh, when it's bolted up. So, but I still wanna make sure that I get the, this pulled out properly. And like I said, there's so much paint on here, it feels low. If I put a straight edge across there, it, you know, it's quite a bit. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and just remove all the paint around this. It's cracked anyways from me pulling on it. We've got to weld this hole in anyway, so that's going to be ground away. So I'll probably just grind to this body line and then just feather this back to get this paint off to make sure we get the sheet metal nice and flat. So let me go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll uh, see where we're at. Okay, as you can see, since we ground it, uh, it's looking really good over here all the way around except for this crescent dip right here. And that's when that mirror was wrenched over and it just kind of cantilevered right in there and eat, you know, put a big old kink in there. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, I can't with the brace, the brace is right here behind it. You can kind of see it through the hole there and it's tied up against the sheet metal like it's supposed to be. Now that uh, we slide, slide hammered it, pulled it forward. Uh, and I can't really get anything behind it to try to spoon this out. So, you know, we got limited options, fill it and uh, you know, hope it doesn't happen again. Or what I think I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna grind this all down to bare steel and I'll tack a few bolts or threaded rod on here and then just put the slide hammer on and try to slowly pull that up and uh, see what we can do. And, you know, they make really neat little spot welding deals that where you can spot weld a little pin on there and pull it up, but I don't have one of those. So we're gonna do it, uh, we're gonna do it my way. So let me grind this smooth, get some uh, bolts tacked on there and see if we can't pull that crescent up. Okay, I just ground uh, three of these things I keep laying around, kind of like a chisel or uh, standard screwdriver shape. And the plan is we're just gonna lay it down inside that crease and I'll try to tack it from both sides and then uh, put, I'll probably put three of them in here, maybe four. We'll try three, I'll put one here, one here and one in the center. And then if we have to, we can pop them off and then move them around. So um, let's go ahead and get these welded on here and see what happens.
Okay, we got them welded on. This one's kind of pointing out a little bit. I'm not happy about that, but I'm going to, you kind of with these tacks, if you try to bend, they're just going to break. So I'm going to kind of pull back at an angle and, and tap at the same time. That metal's still hot, so I'm going to go ahead and pull first before it cools off. Let's see what happens here. Nice and gentle. I don't want to yank so hard that I tear the metal or anything around the weld, so you got to be careful of that. Just because the weld don't break doesn't mean the sheet metal won't. One weld broke underneath there. All right, let me put a straight edge on it. Let's see what we got here. That's looking better. It's actually looking really good down here. It's not, not too bad at all right here. Might have a little bit, but let's try to pull on these two a little bit more. it again. I think a couple more on that one. Maybe a little tiny one on that one and we're going to cut these off. All right I'm going to grind uh, just get the little cutoff wheel and cut these welds and cut them off. I don't want to try to break them off because then I would just distort the sheet metal or possibly tear the sheet metal because we just stressed it by yanking on it. So I'm going to get in here and just cut this, get this one out of the way, cut that one, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I just kind of cut them off. I didn't try to uh, weaken the welds and break them off. It's just, uh, I just kind of got underneath them and then they really just fell off. Now, I, then I went ahead and ground the welds down the thing to remember on this is if you do this, you've kind of uh, volcanoed or puckered up that metal right there. So when you're grinding, uh, you're trying to get that hump down. Well, uh, it could be sheet metal, so you can't tell where the weld stopped and the sheet metal started. So always leave it a little tall, just kind of rough it out, and then you can start checking it with your straight edge or whatever to start if you need to tap that down or what's going on. So uh, just be careful. And if you start grinding and it turns purple or blue real fast, that means you're getting really thin. So you need to be careful or you're just bearing down too hard. So I'm going to take the straight edge on here and take a look. And it looks really good now. It's basically bridging from the paint to paint with the same gap all the way through. Not perfect, but it's a lot better. We still have a little bit of low spot right there, but I'm not going to fret over that. A little high right here. I'm going to tap that down. It's a little high right here too. So let's tap that down a little bit. So to get that crease out, we had to pull these a little bit farther, although we did uh, weld those right down in the bottom of that crease. Still got a little dip right here. I'm tempted to weld another one on and try to pull that out, but I don't think I will. So I'm going to keep tapping on this a little bit and try to get any high spots down. And then we'll just grind the whole area with the little uh, Rolock 3 inch and then uh, and we'll see how it looks. Alright, let's try the mirror on there. Get it right over the holes. 
and that looks really good right there. It's a little high right here in the middle, a little low where it bolts, but when it pulls together, it's going to be just about right. I might tap that down just a little bit so it sits flush. Mirror's facing the right way. That looks pretty good. Uh, and like I said earlier, there's a gasket that goes on here. So that's going to take a little bit of filling, very, very light. And I'll use some uh, I'll use some metal impregnated uh, filler for this. Uh, also do it on the uh, patch panel on the other side. So we'll do them both at the same time. But that's done. Let's move over to the hole. Okay, so this antenna hole, like we talked about earlier, it's low right here, kind of high right here, high right here. And you guys know those antennas, you know, you kind of uh, slip it up through there or poke it down through and then the little two claw pieces kind of push and then you put the bezel on, just tighten that nut up. Well, some of this is from being bent over and some of that is from those little uh, claws kind of pulling up in there. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna get a, a dolly up in there and we're going to just tap these sides down and then we're going to see if there's anything low. It feels a little low right here and uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's low right there. So let's get the high spots down first. Uh, tapping up from inside there is not going to be easy. So we'll have to think of something for that. But uh, let me get these high spots down first and then we'll see where we're at. So I just grabbed a dolly. It looks like about the same radius here and I'm going to slide it up in there. I'll tap real light so I don't stretch. If I hear a ting, 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 I know I'm hitting. I'm just going to kind of lay that up in there. And I'm tapping really light. And you hear that? solid sound that means I'm sandwiching the sheet metal to the dolly so it's time to stop and move on and I got that and that's it just like that just seconds to do that when I started out I was heavy-handed I mean I was wailing away I didn't understand sh stretching metal or anything so uh, go slow and I, I think I mentioned it before Go watch, uh, go watch some of these paint, uh, paintless dent removal guys. Just, what they do is just amazing. And uh, I, I've tried to model a lot of my dent removal on what they do. Obviously, we're painting, so I don't have to be as good as they are. But um, just working that metal and just uh, understanding what's going on before you go start swinging a hammer is really important. So we're low right here, and um, it feels bubbled up right here. And I can feel like a... Uh, almost like an arc so that this side of the the uh, hole is the right plane we got a little dip right there but this part right here has kind of been curled up uh, like a rib so I'm gonna have to do a little more hammering on that and I will probably slide a block of wood in there I like to use wood a lot uh, so I'm actually doing dolly on uh, but it's wood so the woods forgiving and I won't smash the sheet metal between two pieces of steel the hammer and the dolly and if I got a little piece of wood in there and it helps me push up and then I can tap these areas down, it hits the wood, doesn't get uh, stretched out. Just got a little piece of wood in there. I can see it through the hole. Kind of lay it right there. Good thing about wood too, you can take a sander to it and make it any shape you want uh, really quick uh, to fit your needs. And I'm pushing up pretty hard while I'm doing this. The paint's coming off pretty good. And I'll leave the paint on because it helps me see. And then once we get a little closer, then I'll grind that off and then I'll let the uh, sander show me what's high and low. 
So I'm pretty sure I'm low across this lip right here. So we're going to have to push up. And we feel a little high here still, so I'm going to tap that down a little bit more using the wood. And that's feeling a lot better. So we're low right here. Or that hole has been pulled up. One of the two, I have to figure that out. And we're still a little high right here, so we're going to have to get that down. Okay, so before I can go any farther, this little low crease right here needs to come out. And I'm going to figure out how to do that. So I can reach through the uh, speedometer hole here and reach back in here really easily. And I can actually feel the steel has got the, uh, the uh, corresponding high spot. So we're going to get some light up in here. And I'm going to uh, dolly on this side and see if I can swing a hammer up underneath there. I don't know if I can or not. But uh, we'll see what we can do with that. Okay, I was able to tap from underneath a little bit. I still, it feels a little low right here. I'm going to have to try to push up on that and get that back up. And I'm just going to, I'm going to take the uh, underside of the hammer and I'm going to place it right there and I'm just going to smack it with the palm of my hand and see if I can't get that to push up a little bit right there. for this uh, mirror is right here so it's just up close to this so a little trouble getting up to it but uh, it feels a lot better I kind of got the outside of the hole a little high but we brought that up I can just pick that back down easy enough and I'm hitting it really lightly really lightly okay so that feels pretty good let's sand the paint off here and then uh, cut a patch and see how it's gonna look pretty good right there maybe a little low right there just a little bit looks like it kind of kinked that body line in a little bit I don't know if I can pop that out or not and hardly get to it is the problem there's gonna be some filler here anyway so we'll probably have to fix that up with some filler all right let me find a piece of sheet metal and we'll make a patch and uh, get that welded in. Okay, I just found a little scrap laying around. I'm starting to run out of scraps. I've filled so many holes on this thing so far. But what I want to do is uh, I want to bend it to this uh, little bit of a radius here, just a little bit so it, uh, when we scribe it and everything, it's, uh, it's, it's right up against there. So I'm just bending it in my hand and I'll just lay it on here on the sheet metal and see how it fits. Looks pretty good doesn't have to be perfect but it's good to get it you know close to where you're going to be and it's a lot easier to bend a bigger piece of sheet metal to shape and then instead of cutting the circle out and then trying to bend it and then it's going to be too small because you're bending it away right so that feels pretty good right there we'll just hold it up in here get close to the corner so we don't waste any Put a little line right here so I know 
That's the uh, right towards the windshield. I'll cut this out with the tin snips and then trim the edge down to the line and we'll get it in here. Okay, we got, I got a little magnet up in there holding it. So it feels uh, pretty good on the sides. A little high uh, because this curves and when I cut it, the, the tin snips actually bent it back straight again. So I just need to put a little bit of a, a roll in it so it matches this slight uh, curve here. And then we should be pretty close. I can't get it out now. That's a good thing. It fits so well that you can't get it out, right? All right, I'm going to uh, just tap on this a little bit with a hammer. And we'll see if we can get a little roll in this, go in the right direction. Yeah, so it's looking pretty good. I think instead of trying to fight it, because uh, I don't know if this is perfect around the, the perimeter, I'm probably going to tack it and then tap it down and tack it and just get it so it's uh, flush all the way around like I did on all the other holes I've done. So we'll just tack it here where it's flush and then tack it here and then push down a little bit and then if we have to we'll push up and tack it there. So we'll do that first. Okay, let's see if we can get this tacked here. Okay, so it's tacked in, it's flush all the way around. I'm just gonna weld it up. Okay, that's my first TIG welds on camera, and I suck. I know I do. Uh, I just got the TIG welder. I'm still learning, uh, but I thought I'd give it a shot on camera and just uh, take the abuse from everybody. Um, got it too hot. Uh, my hands are just too shaky. I got to steady myself. This is kind of an out of position. I'm not making excuses, but uh, I can do it a lot better on the bench when I can rest my hand. But really thin sheet metal. That's what I got the TIG welder for to help me out doing some of this kind of work. Um, it's a little warmer than it should be. Um, I'm not as proficient as I should be, but I think it's better than the MIG welder. Um, I was tempted just to use the MIG welder, to tell you the truth, and uh, not, not go here. But it, the welds are really small. I can hammer them out. They're going to be they're a little cooler than a MIG. Obviously, mine are too hot. You can tell by the gray. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hammer this out just a little bit, and then we're going to grind the tops off and then uh, see where we land. Okay, got it all hammered out and ground. It uh, feels really good. Got a little uh, low spot right in there where the weld was where I couldn't, I can't quite reach in there and hammer it back up to get that dollied all the way out. We're gonna fill the whole thing anyways, so it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and it's kind of hard to tell because like I said earlier, the paint is so thick, you can't fail if you're just dropping off paint or if you're dropping off into a low spot. So I'll grind this back a little bit more. We're gonna have to come up here with a filler and a cross and we'll just do this whole piece right all at once. So uh, yeah, that's it. My first TIG weld on camera. Didn't come out too bad. Could have could have went a lot worse, that's for sure. Okay, that just about wraps up this video. 
We got one more hole down. I think we only got two left to go. That's going to put us, uh, you know, I don't know, 35 holes total when we're done. There's a lot of holes in this cab. But we got the uh, mirror mount uh, bent back up and uh, the brace behind it pulled with it. So when it, it gets, goes back together, that should work out just fine. Got the uh, antenna hole welded in. You guys got to see me uh, kind of brutalize some TIG welding there, but uh, I'm going to keep practicing. Uh, it came out pretty well. Uh, I didn't blow a big hole in it, so I'm going to take that as a win right there. But we're going to go ahead and fill these later once I fill the, uh, the patch panels. We'll kind of mix up the filler at the same time, do them all at the same time, save some, uh, some labor on that. But uh, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. If you haven't subscribed and you're watching this video, please consider doing so. And if you like what you saw, give a thumbs up. I, I don't think the TIG welding gets a thumbs up on this one, though. But uh, we'll see you on the next one.